Chinese New Year bunny. Yay! The Chinese New Year takes place on the first day of the lunar calendar, sometimes in January, sometimes in February. Families gather and have dinner at a round table. They share yummy food such as dumplings and fish. The color red is used as a symbol of protection. And after dinner, children receive red envelopes from their family with money inside. Go ahead. You're going to go ahead and draw an oval. Okay, it does not have to be perfect. Let me make that a little bit darker so you can see on our video. There we go. Then scoot your paper up a little bit. For the belly, we are going to make a circle kind of hiding a little bit under the head shape. So it kind of looks like a U. Make sure that it's nice and fluffy. Rabbits are very fluffy, okay? Then we're gonna do the cotton tail. It's just a circle, again, hiding a little bit behind the body. The body's overlapping the tail. Now we're gonna do the ears. I'm going to start with one ear here. Curvy line and curvy line on this side. And then I'm just gonna round up the little edge right here, okay? The other ear is hiding behind the head and behind this ear. So it's gonna be the same shape that you drew, except a little bit smaller. Like I said, you can make them pointy if that's the rabbit you are going for. Draw lightly. In your case, you are going to be drawing lightly, so if you make a mistake, you can erase it easy. And then later, you're gonna trace it with Sharpie marker. I'm going to erase this line that I don't need to see anymore because this ear is overlapping. It's in front of that face shape. Now I'm going to make a smaller curvy line following this same shape inside. The face, bunnies have uh, noses that kind of look like hearts. And since this is a profile, it's a side view, you only get to see half of the nose. So if this was a full heart, it would kind of be like that, but we only get to see side, the side view. So you only get to see one side of the heart. We are going to make the mouth a pretty curvy line. Okay, and you're gonna trace that in a little bit as well. The eye, we're gonna make a big circle, sort of like the size of a quarter, okay? Like a big coin. And then you're gonna make a big circle inside and two smaller circles on the bottom. That's the light reflection. You can make your whiskers. Yes, bunnies have whiskers, lots of whiskers. And now we're moving on to the arms. If I'm going too fast, you can pause it and rewind it. The arms, I just kept it simple. It's a curvy line like the letter U. And you can leave just one since it's the profile, but if you want a little bit of the other one to show up, you can make the same shape. Just kind of peeking on this side of the body. Now rabbits, bunnies, they have um, smaller paws on top and then big stumpers on the bottom. That's how they uh, help themselves to jump high high. So we're going to make a sideways curvy line. I told my students sort of like a, like a hot dog bun or a Twinkie and then we are going to connect it here to the rest of the body. So if you're guessing what we are going to do with this line, we're going to erase it in a minute. And then we have the same shape for the, uh, the back bottom paw or foot, if you wanna call it foot. And then you can do just a few lines where the little nails would go. Okay, now get an eraser, erase this line so that when you trace, you don't trace lines that you don't want to show up in the end. Now that we are done 
outlining with our permanent marker. If you have any little lines that you need to get rid of before we begin our colorful marker and the spraying of the watercolor on top, go ahead and erase any unwanted pencil marks that you don't want to leave showing in the end. Okay, now that I am done drawing all the beautiful designs inside of my bunny rabbit, I'm ready to begin adding color. Here I have permanent markers in different colors. I'm only going to color inside of the designs that I drew, the flowers, the petals, the, the paisleys or the little raindrops, whatever you wanna call them, the paw. Um, I did some little um, circles, like little targets that kind of look like coins. You can do that too. You see it there. And this is what it should look like in the if you end. do not have permanent markers, the next best thing would be color pencil or crayon. Now we are ready to add just a little bit of color to the background, to the white areas in our rabbit's body. If you want a white rabbit, that is fine. You can leave it white. This is a liquid watercolor uh, diluted in a little uh, spray bottle. And now what I tell my students is you have to hold it sort of like perfume, okay? With that little opening pointing towards the paper. If you hold it like this, uh, parallel to the table, if you're just kind of squirting like this, it's not really absorbing liquid from the bottom of the straw that's in there, so it's not really gonna work. And if you hold it upside down, it is definitely not gonna work. Okay, just like perfume, just a little bit. So this is our way of making like an airbrush technique. Let it dry a bit. On the bottom of this bunny, I did blue. In this case, on this bunny, I'm gonna do magenta. And it's just a little bit, okay? Put it down, let it dry. Now we are going to begin our background while the bunny rabbit dries after we sprayed it. We are going to be making the Chinese temple and the flowers behind it. For the background you need, um, I used a 12 by 18 red paper and I have a ruler that is 18 inches. You can also use a 12 inch ruler if that's all you have. So I made my lines go up to 14 inches high. I'm going to start here. I'm gonna leave about four fingers from the edge and make my line, okay? Four fingers from the edge, line up my ruler to the number 14. And like I said, if you don't have a ruler that's 14, you can use a 12 inch. So four fingers, make a straight line. And then at the top, you are going to make a line going across. And you can just go just a little bit on each side over your vertical line and then curve this line going up sort of like a candy cane or a swirl make sure that it's pointing in okay same thing over here and if you need to use your fingers it's about two fingers after this line two fingers over here and curve the swirl going up to make it a little extra fancy if you want to add another line underneath it Kind of use about two fingers and make a line. And then just a few lines right here. I would make about four. For this part of the background, you need to pay extra close attention. Here I have gold paint. This is gold tempera. They also sell gold acrylic. And I have a brush. I'm going to dip my brush on its side like this 
and I'm going to print five petals using the brush like this on its side. For this part of the project, the flowers, we are going to press one long petal, just like that, and then you keep going, another petal, just like this, okay? And I would do two petals and carefully dip your brush again, okay? You can turn your paper a little bit, one petal, two petals. See how I'm printing the side of the brush and you get that whole shape of the hair. Okay, I have four there, dipping it again carefully on its side. I know sometimes people when they paint, they go in a rush and then you don't get, um, the right shape that you need. We're sort of creating a background that looks almost like wallpaper where the patterns are evenly scattered around. Just keep going, kind of space them out. And then in a minute, where I'm gonna show you how to do that black glue. So here is my bottle of black glue. Make sure you shake it well. Okay, then the way you open it is you twist the top, make sure you don't have any dry glue there blocking the um, exit of the little hole where the paint is gonna come from. And then you're going to very carefully trace over your lines with this black glue. Okay. So do that to the whole temple and then let it dry. Once you have cut out your rabbit, you are going to turn it over and use a little bit of liquid glue to glue it down. Put your rabbit like a big sticker and place it where you want it. I'm putting my rabbit inside of the Chinese temple because we're gonna put decorations up here. Now we are ready for final details. I'm about to show you how to make this beautiful accordion fan. You need a long strip of paper. As you begin folding it, I fold it a little part to the left, and then you fold it underneath to the right, and then to the left, and then to the right. So you keep going back and forth, back and In this case, I'm gonna use a stapler because it's the fastest, cleanest way. And you have your beautiful little paper fan. Now, to cover up this area with the staple, I cut some smaller black pieces of construction paper and I glued it there. So I'm just gonna use some of my liquid glue, put some glue here. I'm not gonna flood the entire fan, just a little bit where it's touching the background. Make sure you make the black circles for the center. Final details, we are going to use some black temper paint, pour some on a surface. I'm using a circle sponge and I'm going to carefully dip it on the paint and I'm going to put a few circles up here. With a Q-tip, I'm going to dip it in my leftover paint and I'm going to make just a few black polka dots in the background to fill in some of those areas that might look empty. On this one here, my second example, I just have my little phrase and I cut another piece of paper. I'm gonna make this into a little scroll. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the back of it. I'm going to glue it right in the middle. And then to make this look like a scroll, I'm just gonna roll the ends on a pencil like this. I'm gonna roll them up and they stay curly up. Do you see that little curly cue? Okay, other end. You're just rolling this on the pencil tightly and then remove your pencil and you have your little scroll. You can glue this somewhere where you think it should go to decorate. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Happy New Year and best wishes to you.